In today's Adobe XD tutorial, we're going to design and prototype this pop-out scrollable menu interaction where you can select the button, scroll through to choose a selection, and then you can drag it out of your way when you're done. It's a pretty cool interaction, so I hope you guys are ready to get started with today's Adobe XD tutorial. To get started, I have a large iPhone 11 artboard, which is 414 by 896. I'm going to start by dragging in some guides. So we're going to drag these 25 from the left and the right side of the artboard. I'm also going to drag one down from the top and put it 25 from the bottom of the artboard as well. Now that we have our guide set up, we're ready to start creating our menu. Before we go any further, today's video is sponsored by Milanote. Milanote is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it also allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link in the description. All right, so the first thing we wanna do now is grab the rectangle tool and from the bottom left corner, just drag out a rectangle inside of those guides. And I'm gonna put mine around 380 high. And just to make it look nice, we'll add a border radius of 40 to the corners. We can also remove the border and we'll change the color of the artboard by selecting its name and dragging that to a black so we can see this shape. And we'll also give this a fill color as well. I'm giving mine a color code of 28292B. At the top, we need that little notch that's gonna let the user know they can drag it down out of their way. So we're gonna do that with the line tool holding shift as I drag out a straight line. We'll bump that up to four and then we'll add a rounded cap to that. I'm gonna place that about 25 points from the top of our rectangle and just make sure it's centered to the artboard. Below that, I'm gonna press T on the keyboard for the type tool, and we're gonna add a heading. Today we're gonna to be using Roboto, and I'm set this to 26 for the size and for the weight, we went with black. I've center aligned that, and I'm gonna make this uppercase by clicking these two capital T's down here, centering that to the artboard, and I'm gonna place that 65 from the top of this rectangle just to get some good space between that and this little notch icon. For the color, we'll just set that to a straight white. And for each of these options, you can choose how many ever you want. We're gonna go with five or six for today's tutorial. We're going to need a square. So I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle holding shift to make sure it's a perfect square. And then we're going to need some text. So I'll hold alt and drag our heading down. So we have a duplicate of that for some text. For each one of these icons, we're gonna bump those down to an 18 point font. And instead of black, we'll switch that over to bold just to make sure it's not clashing with our heading. And for our squares, we'll set them to about 45, 46 points in size. And then we'll round the corners a little bit by dragging in, and I have mine set to 11. So we'll just drag this centered vertically next to our square, and I have 14 points in between that and the text itself. So with those selected, I'm gonna hold Alt, and we have 20 spacing. Let's bump that down just a bit. So I've placed that 40 below our heading, so we have some good space there. So once again, it's up to you how many of these you want to add. You could select repeat grid and drag down a bunch, but I'm just gonna do this by hand, so I'm gonna hold Alt and drag out a copy, and I'm gonna place that 20 below. My first share is going to be for Twitter, so I'm gonna make sure this is aligned to the left, and I'm gonna change that text. Same thing with the next one. I'm gonna share this one on Facebook. And for each of those, we're gonna grab some icons. So first, let's remove the border from the squares. I always like to use Nucleo. So I'm gonna drag in my icons from there. So I've got Facebook and Twitter. And we're just going to center those inside of each of the squares. And then I'm gonna duplicate these and change them a few times. Now that I have all of my options for this menu, I'm gonna click and drag to select all of them. Hold shift and select the rectangle to deselect it. And I'm gonna push these over to the left. So here's centered, but I wanna go just a little bit further. Thick around 43 points from the left side of this rectangle look good, just so that it looks visually centered. So it's not technically centered, but it looks visually a little bit better than if we actually centered it. 
So I'll show you that. So let me just drag this centered. So there's the menu and then there's what I have. I think personally this looks better, so that's what I'm gonna go with. So to add some color for the icons, I'm just gonna grab the Twitter color and the Facebook color. I'm just using the eyedropper to sample those from the website itself. I actually have that over here on the right, which you guys can't see. And then for these, we'll just set these to a nice looking color. So let's, let's go with like a pinkish color for the embed. And then message, we'll go with kind of the standard green. And this will be a gray. Selecting each of my icons holding shift to grab all of them. We're gonna change their fill to white. And then I'm gonna go in and just group the icon and the square together by clicking and dragging, then command G, or by selecting it holding shift and selecting its background and command G to group as well. So now that those are grouped, I'm going to grab those and their text and group them as well. So when we go to start prototyping, that's gonna make our lives a lot easier. So now we have each one of these in their own individual grouping. The next thing we need to do is name our layers. So when we prototype, we're not working against ourselves. So first I'm gonna rename each one of these options to one through five. Since they're out of order, I'm gonna go ahead and reorganize those as well. So now we have one through five. So before I forget, we need to add a rectangle behind this notch line so that when we prototype, we can use that as our drag trigger instead of our notch. That's just going to allow us to have a larger surface area so that we don't have to painfully click on this little line. So I'll just grab the rectangle tool and just drag one out around it. Eye on the keyboard and I'm going to select the background color for the fill and just remove the border. Command left square bracket key until it gets behind our line. And then I'll just center it up and there we go. Share file, that's self-explanatory, we're good there. Line, let's call this drag line. Then the rectangle behind it, we'll just call that drag button. And lastly, the background, called background. Now that we have everything nice and named and organized, let's select one through five here and go to this icon right here for vertical scroll. And that's gonna take that group and group it together. And now we have these parameters for a scroll group. So I'm gonna drag this bottom handle somewhere in between embed and above that fourth icon there. So if we were to hit live preview, you can now scroll through each one of these options just by simply adding that scroll group. The next thing we wanna do is select everything but the background and we wanna group that together. I'm just gonna call this menu group. I'm gonna select the background next and copy it and paste it on top. And I've named this to mask square. So we're gonna use this to mask our menu group. So if I drag this out of the way, when this is sliding up in our auto animate, we don't wanna see any icons down here. We want this to be blank space. So by masking it, it's going to slide cropped inside of this bounding box. So I'm gonna select the mask square, hold shift and grab the menu group and command shift M to mask with shape. Or you can go up to object, mask with shape. Now that we have that, we are ready to start prototyping. So I'm gonna select the artboard and hit command D to create a duplicate. And we'll just call this closed menu and open menu. Swapping to the prototype tab, I'm going to grab the background and drag a wire over to the open menu artboard. This is going to be a tap trigger, auto animate, and we're gonna set the easing to ease out, and the seconds will go with 0.6 seconds. Next, we need to go into the mask group and grab the drag button on the second artboard, the open menu, and drag that wire back to our closed menu. This is going to be set to a drag trigger, auto animate, and for the easing, we'll leave that at none. So now we can drag this to close the menu. But right now, this is going to do absolutely nothing because Adobe XD is not recognizing any changes between these two artboards for auto animate to do anything. So here on closed menu now, we're gonna swap back to the design tab and collapse this menu for the start state of our prototype. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the background and just drag this down to about 60 high for a button height. Next, inside of our mask group, I'm gonna grab the menu itself and I'm gonna drag that down to somewhere around there. Selecting drag line, we can turn the opacity to zero to hide it. Share file is going to be dragged to the center of our button and we're gonna bump that down to 18 point for the font and make sure it's centered inside of our button. For our scroll group, I'm gonna select everything but our first option and just drag some space in between it. And then the last three and add just a little bit more spacing. So what's gonna happen is as this auto animates over to our end state, Facebook's gonna slide in and this one's gonna be following right behind it. And these other ones, they don't really matter because they're already off the screen. Our share file is going to drag up and expand. And then our line is going to become full opacity and drag up as well. So let's take a look at this. So when we hit live preview, if I select share file, everything slides in. Share file grows in size. Our line comes up nicely. We can scroll through our group. And now we can drag this to collapse our menu. So like I said, this is a pretty cool interaction and I hope you guys enjoyed creating this. That's gonna be the end of this tutorial. So I hope this tutorial showed you guys that you can do a lot of cool things in Adobe XD's prototype tab just by mixing features together. So right here we got a scroll group with auto animate, drag triggers, and we're able to create this pretty cool menu. Thanks to Milanote for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check out their product for planning your next creative project, check out the link at the top of the description. Make sure you guys subscribe for more design and Adobe XD related content. As always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.